Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. One and only Michael Savage with you on this, thank God it's Friday day. And now let's go to the callers on Rock and Roll Friday on The Savage Nation. I tried that, I wanted something new. I have to do something new every day, otherwise I'll tell you the truth, I'd fall asleep here. I got a report this morning. Oh, you're listening to the Savage Nation. This is not coming in on your filling. You're not imagining this. The keywords of the stories in the media, you're not going to believe what they were. News. In other words, when I say keywords, what are the top news stories in the news, okay, recently? Irma, iPhone 8, North Korea, Hurricane Irma, Trump, iPhone X. Hurricane Maria, Mexico earthquake, Hurricane Jose, and, and NFL. So now, if I start to talk to you, what I want to talk about, like Come Back America, where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? Most of you are not even going to listen to what I'm talking about. You're going to, you're going to get nervous. You're going to want to hear about a hurricane or tornado or a fire. Your mind's going to skip to the morons in the NFL you're not going to pay attention to me. Th this is the problem. I mean, I was all set to talk about Comeback America, where did it go, when did liberals become fascistic, by referring to the fall of Rome, giving you a little history on the fall of Rome and how it relates to the invasion of America by the barbarians today, and comparing them to the barbarians uh, that invaded Rome and destroyed the civilization of Rome. And I was going to quote what I quoted in my last book, that Roman civilization did not pass peacefully away it was assassinated that was the i think the i think that was the opening quote to one of my last books i was going to do all of that i was going to tell you about <clears throat> the story of the germanic race which invaded rome see at that time the germanic race was barbaric and they were the barbarians but the key word i was going to tell you the key words the key line was that rome and the barbarians at that time were not only protagonists, but they had two different attitudes to life, civilization and barbarism. I was going to tell you all of that. I was going to talk about all of these things. But alas, I'm in a medium that doesn't permit it. Instead, I have to talk about the trash and the dirt of society. Instead, I have to wrap my brain around the lowest form of humanity, those people that I've seen on the left in the media. I don't understand how they can get up in the morning and shave. You take a guy like Lawrence O'Donnell. He comes from an Irish Catholic background in Boston, went to an, a very expensive private school, and yet he attacks General Kelly, saying Kelly grew up in an Irish neighborhood in Boston that was segregated where there were no blacks. Do you realize how low this guy is? Now, Lawrence O'Donnell came from a family that his father was an attorney. He is also of Irish descent. But he looked down, he looks down upon Kelly, who was poor while O'Donnell was rich. Do you understand where this is coming from? Kelly, he calls a low-class Irishman, Kelly, General Kelly. A man, I got to tell you, O'Donnell is not fit to shine his shoes. O'Donnell, this guy, this character on MSNBC, who jumped into the fray over what Kelly said, a man who's given his own son to this nation, son's life to this nation, while well, all O'Donnell has done is given us hatred, is also of Irish descent, also grew up in Boston. You see, I did my research, went to Harvard. That's where his mind was per polluted. And what you don't know about O'Donnell, who was a declared socialist, which is why he hates America, was a legislative aide to Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. That would be like working for Tip O'Neill on the days that he's sober, which were none. And what is the tuition at St. Sebastian's Private School that O'Donnell went to, an independent all-boys Catholic secondary school in Needham, Massachusetts. Now, who is O'Donnell? You don't even know who I'm talking about. He's a low-ranking, unheard-of, hater of America on MSNBC who has the nerve to attack General Kelly, who he calls a racist because Kelly is from an Irish Catholic neighborhood in Boston. What's ironic here is that O'Donnell 
the lowlife, was also an Irish Catholic from Boston. But you see, it's not about Irish Catholicism. It's about the fact that this snotty individual, O'Donnell, came from a rich family, went to a private Catholic school that cost $44,000 a year today in the 2017 academic year. So what I'm saying to you is I was going to talk about all of these things, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to do it Rock and Roll Friday and open it up to the callers on the show, 855-407-282. I was really going to start talking about seagulls and pelicans, and then I changed it to Come Back America. Where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? I think I know the answer to that. And uh, I was going to relate it to the fact that when I wake up in the morning at dawn, I usually take old stale bread and feed it to the seagulls. I go out in the old bathrobe before the coffee, and I throw bread to the gulls. They always wait for me. They're like pet birds by now. But I've noticed something unique, which is that now the pelicans are coming in after the uh, fires. It seems that something's gone wrong in the ecosystem because the pelicans are now as hungry as the gulls. And I never do pelicans to be scavengers, while seagulls are scavengers, we know that. And these glorious birds, the pelicans, were now competing with the seagulls for the bread that I threw them. But the story was not about the competition between various species of birds. It was about the fact that neither of them killed each other. The pelicans, which are ten times larger than the seagulls, could easily kill the seagulls in the, when they go for the bread, but they don't. What happens is that the pelicans come in, these large B1s of the bird world, and they land, and the other guys just kind of bob away, but they don't kill them. And I was trying to say that these species of birds have more dignity than we do. Yes, they're competing for scraps of bread, but they don't kill each other over it. Man is much lower than birds. Man is much lower than birds. There was a time in my life when liberals and conservatives disagreed, they even maybe raised their voices, but they, they were never like the drug addicts on campuses today who are so self-righteous in their hatred that they dare come on a college campus at University of California, Santa Cruz, right in my backyard, so to speak, where a group of college Republicans were meeting, not Nazis, college Republicans, and these self-righteous SOBs calling themselves progressives broke into the meeting in the library and started to scream, Nazis off campus. Nazis off campus. One of the boys stood up and said, I'm a Democrat. I voted for Hillary Clinton. They said, we don't care. You're here. You're a Nazi. He tried to reason with these fascistic progressives. There was no reasoning. And I realized that we're now living not in a very dangerous age. We've been in a very dangerous age ever since Obama was foisted upon us by forces we will never, ever understand. And where it ends, nobody knows. I have some idea where this ends. That's why I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War a number of years ago. But I said, how did it become acceptable for self-righteous progressives to stand up and call anyone they disagree with Nazis? They've gone now from, you're a conservative, you're, first it was conservative, then right-winger. Then it was fascist, now it's Nazi. Anyone they disagree with. And they were screaming this, they were saying, you don't know, you threaten all marginal people on this campus, they scream. What is a marginal person? What do you mean a marginal person? What does that mean? It means a person who didn't belong there to begin with. Someone who didn't have the grades to make it in an academic setting. Someone who was selected sim simply because of their marginal uh, selectivity. Is that why they're there? I never heard of anything like this. What do you mean by a marginal person? Well, what does that mean, a marginal person? A, a Republican threatens a marginal person? How do they define themselves as a marginal person? What is a marginal person? I would love for real Nazis to meet the fake progressive boys on these campuses one day. I'd love to see what happens when these progressive loudmouths really run into a real Nazi. I'd love to see what really happens. It's so easy to beat up and attack Republican kids. It's so easy to attack Jewish boys who defend Israel and call them Nazi and fascist. I wonder what would happen if these so-called progressive, self-righteous, fraudulent, dangerous, so-called revolutionaries from spoiled brat backgrounds like O'Donnell really ran into an actual Nazi. At least that's what I wanted to talk about, but I don't think I'll get to it today. The phone number here is 855-400-7282. I was looking at the stories, as I said to you, the top non-branded keywords that were used in the media 
And it was Irma, iPhone 8, North Korea, Hurricane Irma, Trump, iPhone X, Hurricane Maria, Mexico earthquake, Hurricane Jose, and NFL. And then I went down the list and I looked, you're never going to believe this one. What do you think of the top-ranked media publications for September? Number one, ESPN. I never watched it. I never went on ESPN in my life. MSN, CNN, News.Google, Fox News, New York Times. Drudge Report is number seven, above the Washington Post, above sports at Yahoo, and above BuzzFeed. How is it that a one-man operation like Drudge is number seven in, the, in a world of media like this? How is that even possible? Well, he is number seven. And I was shocked at that. When you look at the power of a magazine, a paper like the Washington Post, the staff, what do they have, 200 people in there? I don't know how, how people do these things. But then I look at the stories that people click on. I never covered Irma. I don't talk about iPhones. I don't talk about Hurricane Irma. I don't talk about the iPhone. I didn't talk about Hurricane Maria. I didn't talk about the Mexico earthquake. I didn't talk about Hurricane Jose. I did talk about the NFL, just a bit. Now, I know, how to, I, I know how because I'm a genius at, at statistics. If I really cared only about ratings, I can tell you right now, I can make the ratings on my show double if I really wanted to. And that would be, I just look up keywords and talk only about them. And then call myself the greatest genius that ever existed. And then make believe that I hear you when I don't hear you. Repeat my phone number over and over again and sell you a toupee. So that's the story. That's the State of the Union today. This is the Savage Nation, the home of God, faith, and reason. My big book, which will be out in a few weeks now. God, it's so close. I'm actually getting nervous. The search to find God is the finding itself. I don't know if religious people are going to like that. The search to find God is the finding itself. I think the average person who is spiritually oriented will find the book phenomenally interesting, but people who are into organized religion may reject it. Because I'm saying the search to find God is the finding of God itself, finding of God himself, meaning you don't need an intermediary to find God. That's the way I see it, and I'm only one man among seven billion. So who knows if people are going to resonate with my view. I have no idea whether God, faith, and reason will catch a wave. I don't know whether it will trend like North Korea, Hurricane Irma, iPhone X, Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Jose, Irma, iPhone 8. I don't know if God, faith, and reason will trend like that. All I know is that I got to do what I do, and you got to call 855 400 7282. And if you want to talk about the topic I raised, which is Come Back America, where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? And if you want to talk about the seagulls and the pelicans who don't kill each other over bread, I'll tell you what it comes down to. It's a one liner. One liner. We're scraping for a piece of truth on the savage nation. We're just scraping for a piece of truth in a sea of lies. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. What a country we become. Everything they blame on Trump, a fire, it's Trump. A hurricane, it's Trump. An asteroid hits the earth, it's Trump. Everything he does is wrong to these psychopaths. It's impossible to be true. Ode to the savage nation. Not O, oh, I said ode to. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truths you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up again with worn-out tools if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn again, and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe the word about your loss, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, 
and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with kings, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. That was written not by a rap star. That was written not by a progressive. That was written not by one of the illiterate, psychopathic progressives. That was written by Rudyard Kipling, one of the greatest poets of all time, whose life was destroyed by the progressives of his time, who called him every name under the sun when his politics no longer fit uh, the bill. A poster was made up for me along these lines back in 2002, I think when I first began in talk radio. I, I always used to keep a pocket copy of If in, um, well, readily at hand. And I've recommended to you over the years, you have a child, read them If, read it over, read it, read it to them repeatedly all through their growth and explain to them what if means and they'll learn to be independent and strong that's only if you can explain it to them properly <laughs> that's the kicker word on that one if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you how's that one boy does that apply to me in my radio career and my writing career if you can wait and not be tired by waiting I can wait for 40 years for something and one thing is for sure, I never forget my enemies. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I painted the white, not the white rabbit, about two years ago. I painted the white owl. I stopped painting, by the way. I've given up water painting for a while, watercolors. I don't know. I took a course. I went and bought $400 worth of watercolor paints. I went to class twice. Then the third week, I had to be out of town. The fourth week, I had to be out of town. Then I never wanted to go back. I can't go back to school. You can't go home again. It's impossible. You know, what am I going to say to you? This is my whole art form right here. It's called uh, radio. This is the art form. The oral tradition is in my genes, so that's why I'm good at this, and I have the voice for it. I don't sound like Frito. If I had a voice like Frito, I wouldn't be in radio. I would have chosen another field. I'm smart. I can handle things. I, w I wouldn't do that on the radio. If I had a voice like that, I would go into another field. It doesn't mean that you're not intelligent, but you're not made for radio. Well, most people in radio do have a voice for radio. Most people in television don't have the brains for, for commentary. They have uh, just looks, with rare exception. This guy O'Donnell, here's a guy. I'm going back to him because you don't even know who I'm talking about. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to harp on it a little bit. Here we have the gold star controversy based on nothing. Here we have an unknown congresswoman with a goofy hat who looks like a, just a, a goofball, a nobody. In my day, we used to call someone like that a non-entity. That's a phrase that should be brought back. She's a non-entity, basically, a nothing. So now she criticizes a great general, a real Marine general, not a faker, calls him names, says he's a racist. See, anyone who disagrees with a black leftist is automatically a racist, according to the knee-jerk fascists on the left. Now, joining the fray is a guy with very low ratings, possibly the lowest ratings in the media, this guy O'Donnell, who is a declared socialist. What's interesting is that he attacks General Kelly as a racist. Now, you got to listen very carefully to O3. Just play it. John Kelly had absolutely no empathy for Frederica Wilson today. And but you they did? have more in common than John Kelly realizes. They were both born in segregated cities. They both went to segregated schools. Frederica Wilson was born in Miami in 1942. Right. Okay. So he's saying he doesn't like John Kelly. 
and he tells you why in the next in clip four. Let's start that one, Robert, please. John Kelly never sat beside a student like Frederica Wilson in his elementary school. Did the you? language about black people in John Kelly's white neighborhood was exactly the same language about black people and we gotta stop that right was here. used at that. If, if I were General Kelly, I would challenge O'Donnell to a fist fight for what he is saying to him. This low life, this low creature, O'Donnell, is Irish from the same exact city of Boston at about the same time. And what the snot nose O'Donnell is actually saying is that John Kelly was shanty Irish because he didn't have the money that O'Donnell had. See, O'Donnell comes from a family whose father was an attorney. He's also Boston Irish. But you see, O'Donnell, coming from a richer home, went to a private Catholic school called St. Sebastian's that uh, has a tuition today of $44,000 a year. I wonder if um, Lawrence O'Donnell sat, to, sat next to any Frederica Wilsons in that Catholic school. Anyone have an answer to that one? I kind of think he's looking in the mirror and calling himself names. But do you realize how low this situation is that he would call a, a distinguished general who gave his son, whose son gave his life to this nation, a name like that, and try to equate him with a racist simply because he's criticizing some goofy woman who happens to be a demagogue, who happens to be African-American? Do you understand how low MSNBC has become now, I don't blame O'Donnell. He should be thrown off the air, but there is no management at MSNBC. I know who runs it. Believe me, I know the type. I met the type. It's the type at MSNBC called Phil Griffin who is the problem. He permits this to go on. Do you realize if I did a thing like that, I would be thrown off the air? Do you have any idea that if I implied that someone disagrees with someone because they're a racist, I wouldn't last in the radio business? And yet... The people at MSNBC, tied into Microsoft, tied into Bill Gates, have free reign to smear anybody that they want because Bill Gates is the boss. Never forget that MSNBC, and I know very well what that means, it's Microsoft money that funded MSNBC. So fundamentally, it's Bill Gates who's responsible for this O'Donnell trashing of a great American general, and I'll leave it at that. I have nothing more to say on the issue. That's all. I, I think I've covered it. Just remember what I said. Let me review it so you don't forget it. Boston Irish, both O'Donnell and Kelly. While General Kelly is a distinguished man who was a Marine general, is a Marine general, and of course uh, the number one guy in the White House next to the president, the gatekeeper in essence, had a son who also enlisted in the, in the Marines who died in Afghanistan and gave his life for this nation. Lawrence O'Donnell comes from a rich Irish background and looks down upon General Kelly because Kelly was poor. Do you know how low this is to call him a racist simply because he's poorer than he was? Both Irish, both Boston. One came from a humble working class family, that would be the general. One came from uh, uh, an attorney. Oh, by the way, one other kicker that you may not know about. O'Donnell wrote a book in 1983 about a case of wrongful death and police brutality in which O'Donnell's father was the plaintiff's lawyer. It doesn't get any lower than that, does it? Letty on WABC Line 4, go ahead, please. Hello? Yeah, go on, yeah. I'm going right to the point, cognitive humorist Dr. Savage. Listen, I'm from that background, and I've been on both sides of that aisle of rich and, you know, working class. And let me tell you, General Kelly to be thrown into class warfare. That's what Leonard, that's what O'Donnell did. He tried to start a cheap class war. You are right, and that's because he looks down upon the poor Irish from Boston as he calls them shanty Irish behind behind closed doors. That's what he must be thinking. And I will tell you right now, it's Bill Gates who has to be flooded with letters to fire O'Donnell for doing this to a distinguished general whose son gave his life for this nation. Don't go to Phil Griffin. He's a nobody. He's a nothing. He's an empty suit. The man you go to is Bill Gates. Bill Gates is MS of the MSNBC. Do you know that? What? What? Yes, I do know that. 
All right. So what's what's the next point? There's a lot of points. Listen, to equate these two individuals, because... Well, you can't equate them. You can't put... Said, you cannot put an O'Donnell in the same category as a General Kelly. Like one is a giant. The other... One is a giant. That would be the general, and the other is a Lilliputian. It's that simple. Thank you for the call. I'm glad you uh, joined in on that. But we're not going to talk about it. That's all. That's all. It's up to it's up to Bill Gates, who pretends to be a nice guy with a sweater, to step in and take some of these rabid mad dogs off the air. He can do it. Buy him out. Pay off his contract. There was another one, wasn't there? A guy who got thrown off, and he's on the internet now. Who was the other one they threw off? The one, the crazy one, uh, the guy who acted crazy. I forget his name. What was his name? Another another left wing nut. Who was that? No one remembers his name. Can't even remember the name. No, we're not talking about O'Reilly. You know, once you lose your major media position, you're, you're nobody. That's the horrible truth of you. People may make more money on this. They say they do on the internet. They don't make more. That's nah, nonsense. They gonna have twelve million subscribers at a hundred a year, right? Sure. No one hears of them again. You you know, it's like Howard Stern. Who listens to him on Sirius? Maybe the wig maker. I don't know. It could be the wig maker listens in. Uh, the same people who watch the NFL must listen to him to hear about Braziers and lesbians. I really don't know. But no one hears them. They make a lot of money, but no one hears them. Once you are not on the me in the mainstream media, whether it's on a main radio station syndication as I am, or on a television station, you become a nobody. So that's it. I, is this show falling on deaf ears because I was too esoteric in the beginning i don't know i don't know I'm, I'm in a strange mood i'm in a weird place today i i don't know how much lower the nation can go so i was going to do that thing come back america because where is america it can't be donald trump that caused all of this can it what has trump actually done it so bad can anyone explain to me why they hate him so much is it because he beat hillary clinton is that the only reason now break it apart the madness, the insanity, the foaming at the at the mouth, hatred for him is out of proportion with all of his defects, deficits, okay? What has he actually done that's so horrendous? I don't I can't put my finger on it. What is driving them so crazy? Now it is true that George I don't know if this is related or not. George Soros, who to me is one of the most evil people on the planet, uh, one man's opinion, transferred eighteen billion dollars of his own money to his own foundation in order to upset elections around the globe. And what's intriguing to me is that here's a man who actually has meddled in elections all over Europe and has never been called on the carpet for it, while Donald Trump, who never actually has been proven to have had the Russians medal for him, is now being investigated by a man who has so overstepped his boundaries as a, as a uh, special investigator that we've never seen anything like this in American history. And that is because Mueller is now out of control. He's, he's a raging, out-of-control prosecutor. I saw a great article on this yesterday, and uh, it talked about the worst of all of them, a man, a man named Andrew Weissman. Oh, yes, you didn't know that. The mad dog behind Mueller is a man who has destroyed one life after another, according to this article, and it was written by a liberal who said that Andrew Weissman, the prosecutor hired by Mueller, has destroyed one life after another, cost thousands of jobs at Enron with false accusations. And then when it was found that he made the whole thing up, it was too late, the jobs were gone. This one mad dog lawyer, Andrew Weissman, the article said, was hired by Mueller in order to bring down Trump's family. And they said that even if there is no crime, Weissman will invent one. Andrew Weissman will invent a crime in order to indict one of Trump's children. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I wish I could find that article because it was so well written, it's worth quoting it in its entirety. But somehow it got lost. I would like Jim or Ryan or uh, one of you to look for that article. It was just yesterday, and I can't find the article. 855-407-282. KKOH up in Reno. Trey up on line six. Then we got to take a quick break. Go ahead. Fire away, Trey. Yes, sir. I just wanted to comment on uh, General John Kelly. I think if you want to know the type of man he was, you have to look at the family uh, that he raised, and the, uh, especially the young men uh, that served underneath him. Um, Robert Kelly was in my unit when he was killed in Afghanistan. 
And um, I know. You, so you you were serving with with Kelly's son in Afghanistan. So I did. Yes, sir. Huh. <laughs> That's okay. We like to hear children. We love to hear children. Trey, under what circumstances, if you can't, no, I don't want to go into it. He lost his son in Afghanistan while O'Donnell lost his honor by attacking Kelly. Let's leave it at that. Does that work for you, Trey? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for that one. Your son said yes. I heard that one. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Nothing is more essential than protecting your home today, especially in these days, right? But getting traditional home security can be a punishing and very expensive task. That's why I say you really ought to look into Simply Safe Home Security. Well, why don't you ask anyone locked into a long term security contract? They're going to be on the hook for three years, paying forty five, fifty five bucks a month. Or then ask someone who's had a system hardwired in their walls. The installation alone could cost them a fortune. Simply Safe got rid of all of this, right? Simply Safe has no long-term contract. There are no obligations, and when you move, you can take it with you. This is an award-winning home security system. Tech Magazine CNET calls Simply Safe better, smarter home security. And your home is protected around the clock with 24/7 professional monitoring. If there's trouble, they send the police. It costs just fifteen dollars a month with Simply Safe, three times less than what the other guys charge. So protect your home today. You can buy Simply Safe at your local Best Buy and have your home protected by tonight, or. Visit SimplySafeSavage.com, and you're going to get 10% off. That's SimplySafeSavage.com, 10% off your system, SimplySafeSavage.com. Now let's have some Dropkick Murphy, and we're going to play the real Lawrence O'Donnell. When he was caught off mic, he's loved so much by his staff that they recorded this. This is the man. Okay, turn They can't do a double. We're talking about a low life on MSNBC who was Irish from Boston, who came from a rich family. Father was a lawyer. Nothing wrong with that. But what's wrong with this is that he now attacks General Kelly for having dared to say the truth about that call to the Gold Star mom. And he doesn't just talk about it in a generic term. He then calls General Kelly a racist, saying that General Kelly is a racist because he grew up in Boston and he didn't sit next to black people. It is such BS because this guy, O'Donnell, came from a rich family, went to St. Sebastian's private school, which costs today $47,000, $44,000 a year. Let me ask you something. Do you agree with me that this is a class war by Lawrence O'Donnell, who thinks that General Kelly is shanty Irish behind the curtains? Why don't you listen now to the insanity that follows? This is O'Donnell when caught off mic with an open mic. What's going on? Why am I losing this? Why don't I have sound? All right, it's back. Someone's pressing buttons and turning my sound off. Someone in that control room is out of control. You have insanity in my earpiece. Don't, don't leave it there. It's not my earpiece. It's somebody talking on our lines. Every time we go to a SOT, there's a woman talking in my ear about something that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. Stop the hammering out there. Who's got a hammer? Where is it? Where's the <laughs> hammer? Is it on the uh, go up on the other floor? Somebody Attention, go up there Bill and Gates. stop the hammering. Stop the hammering. I'm not making I'll this up. I'll go down to the damn floor myself and stop it. Keep the damn commercial break going. Call this is the nice guy. Phil Griffin. I don't care who the you have there to call. There you go, stop Phil. Hey, Phil, you schmuck. Hammering. Do something. Do something, you schmuck, Phil Griffin. Because when I get through with the two of you, you're going to wish to God you got rid of the lunatic. We're not putting up with calling General Kelly a racist. Bill Gates, get rid of them. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show. 
The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Because the first part of MSNBC is MS, that's Microsoft. They're in partnership, so far as I know. Maybe it's no longer a partnership, but I do know this. I know that a major American corporation that specializes in philanthropy should put some controls on a mad dog amongst their uh, stable of rabid mad dogs when they go over the line and say, no, you can't call General Kelly a true American hero whose son gave his life for this nation. No, you can't call him a racist and you're fired. That's the end of it. But see, Bill Gates is not going to step in because once he did, he would admit that he has no control over this mad dog operation. But it doesn't mean that I can't tell you that something must be done because I opened the show by saying to you, I observed this morning as I fed the seagulls, and I often do, that uh, when the large pelicans came along to fight over the bread, they didn't kill each other. They got sort of like floated out of the way. That even the birds know how to get along with each other. Even when they're fighting over a scrap of bread, they don't kill each other. While in America now, the left-wing fascists are literally killing the truth, and they're going to kill this nation unless they are reined in. And that has to start today. It has to start with Bill Gates, who wants the best for America, I am sure to step in and make Phil Griffin get control of the mad dogs in his network. Now, why am I so angry? Because there's no greater thing that you can lose than your child. There's nothing worse that could happen to a man. But he didn't just get lost to a drug addiction. He didn't get lost in a car wreck. General Kelly lost his son as his son was fighting in Afghanistan while this lowlife O'Donnell called him a racist because he's Irish Catholic from Boston. Now, what's ironic here and stupid is that O'Donnell's Irish Catholic from Boston. But what you don't know is what I taught you today, is that O'Donnell comes from a rich family of Irish Catholics. His father was a lawyer. And what he's saying here is that Kelly, who was poor Irish Catholic, is no good and he's a racist. It doesn't get any lower than this. And so now let me bring it into what we're talking about which is this non-entity woman who no one ever heard of and will be, re be will be forgotten to history. She'll go back to the obscurity that she was from, this Frederica Wilson, the crazy woman with the hat, in clip five. Let's hear this one now. You mean to tell me that I have become so important <laughs> that the White House is following me? And my word, this is amazing. It's amazing. That is absolutely phenomenal. I have to tell my kids that I'm a rock star now. <laughs> no, you're not a rock star now. You're a rockhead now. So now following up with that is the mad dog on MSNBC who calls General Kelly a racist in clip four. You got to hear this one. It's very important you hear it. John Kelly never sat beside a student like Frederica Wilson in his elementary school. The language about black people did you? in John Kelly's hey, white O'Donnell, neighborhood did you? was exactly the same language about black people that was used at that time you know in this white is communities in the segregated South. Do you know this is and warfare? The pain of desegregating Boston schools was visited entirely upon the Let's students. Stop right here. Do you realize what he's doing? He's throwing lighter fluid. He's trying to cause a race war for ratings, just to move the needle slightly, this lowlife O'Donnell, this low creature who knows much better. After all, his father was a lawyer. He went to Harvard. He wrote for the Harvard Lampoon. He was captain of the baseball team at in high school. He, he was on a football team. He knows better. He knows what he's doing. He knows that right now he is the demagogues that he probably heard should be silenced when he worked for Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who was actually a true liberal. Moynihan was one of the true great liberals of American political history, incidentally. This man knows what he's doing. He's trying to start a race war. But worse than that, he is smearing the reputation or trying to do so of General Kelly. Now, if it came from another leftist, you could understand it. But this guy O'Donnell is an avowed socialist, which is utterly unbelievable given that he comes from a rich family, but then I'm not surprised by anything today. And then on top of it all, we find out in the following tape that he may be actually mentally in, uh, unstable. If you listen to the following tape, are you telling me that he's fit to be on broadcast news? Are you telling me a man who is caught off tape saying things like this, 
should not be removed from the airwaves and given the treatment that he so desperately needs, that he should not be given the medication and the treatment that he so badly needs. You listen and judge for yourself. I'm only asking the question. What's going on? Why am I losing this? Why don't I have sound? All right, it's back. Someone's pressing buttons and turning my sound off. Someone in that control room is out of control. You have insanity in my earpiece. Don't, don't leave it there. It's not my earpiece. It's somebody talking on our lines. Every time we go to a SOT, there's a woman talking in my ear about something that has nothing to do with what we're doing <laughs> here. Sock. Stop the hammering out there. Who's got a hammer? Where is it? Where's the hammer? Is it on the... Uh, go up on the other floor. Somebody go up there and stop the hammering. Stop the hammering. Oh, I'll go down no. to the damn floor myself and stop it. Keep the damn commercial nice break guy. going. Call f***ing Phil Griffin. I don't care who the f*** you have to call. Stop the hammering. The woman yeah, talking yeah. in my ear was talking about the <laughs> Labor Day special repeatedly. Every time we went to a song. Bill Gates' MSNBC. I don't know why I bother to say how to cut the slots when you don't do it. It just f***ing sucks. It f***ing sucks to be out here. That's real classy. That's real classy, but I hear mental derangement. They keep saying that Trump should be removed under the 25th Amendment. I think this guy should be given the treatment he desperately needs. I mean, I had a combination of listening to that. I heard a combo of Captain Quig, uh, the stainless steel balls in the hand played by Humphrey Bogart and the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. This is pure insanity. And this is what passes for news in the United States of America. Now, it was merely, if it was merely entertainment, fine. But when he's trying to start a race war and he's trying to smear a great general like General Kelly, who has never, ever had anything in his record to indicate that he was a racist, this is now beyond the pale. This has to be stopped. And I think what you should do is flood Microsoft, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, however you could reach them in any way, thousands, hundreds of thousands of emails demanding that Phil Griffin and O'Donnell be fired for smearing a great American general who gave his son to this nation. I'm not, I'm, you, don't know, you don't know how much this affects me. I have nothing personal involved in this, nothing. I don't know O'Donnell. I have nothing against any of them personally. You know, but you have to draw a line in the sand somewhere, don't you? Don't you have to use the power you have in any way you can when you think you're right and they're wrong? Well, calling the general a racist and smearing his name has now crossed that line. And now I'm going to move on. That's all. You don't want to hear it anymore. Already you moved on to a, a hurricane. I, I could feel it. I have a, a sixth sense. So what do you want to talk about? Let's see. Live reads. I can do a few. Five. Maybe I can do 12 live reads in a row right now. Just 12 minutes of ads. That might entertain the audience more than Hurricane Irma. Or I could get so esoteric and talk about Mueller and what he's doing and how he's violating the law and how he hired a man named Weissman and who Weissman is and how Weissman is trying to destroy Donald Trump's family based upon no evidence whatsoever. And I can talk about the article in The Hill by Sidney Powell who says that this guy, Andrew Weissman, hired by Mueller to destroy Trump's family, will indict them over nothing. He will invent the crime, and then when it's found that it's invented, he'll run away laughing all the way to his next job. Meanwhile, the family will be destroyed. Now, what does he mean by that? His long-term, he's talking about Mueller's long-term friend and former counsel, Andrew Weissman, is not just a tough prosecutor. He says... Time after time, courts have reversed Weissman's most touted victories for his tactics. And he says, this is hardly the stuff of a hero in the law. You see, Andrew Weissman, as deputy and later director of the Enron Task Force, you remember, remember that, Weissman destroyed the venerable accounting firm of Arthur Anderson, LLP, and its 85,000 jobs worldwide, only to be reversed several years later by a unanimous Supreme Court but nothing happened to Weissman. He said, next is Weissman. Weissman! Hello, Weissman! Next, Weissman! Creatively criminalized a business transaction between Merrill Lynch and Enron. What happened next? Four Merrill executives went to prison for as long as a year. Weissman's team made sure they did not even get bail pending their appeals, even though the charges Weissman concocted 
like those against Anderson, were literally unprecedented. Weissmann's prosecution devastated the lives and families of the Merrill executives, causing enormous defense costs, unimaginable stress, and torturous prison time. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed the mass of the case. Weissmann quietly resigned from the Enron task force, just as the judge in the Enron broadband br prosecution began excoriating Weissmann's team and the press began catching on the Weissmann's modus operandi. I'm talking about who Mueller hired to destroy Trump's family. And what does the writer of this article say? Mueller knows this history. Is this why he tapped Weissmann to target Paul Manafort? And he concludes his article in The Hill, Sidney Powell does, as follows. We all lose from Weissmann's involvement in this case. First, the truth plays no role in Weissmann's quest. Second, respect for the rule of law, simple decency, and following the facts do not appear in Weissmann's playbook. Third, and most important, all Americans lose whenever our judicial system becomes a weapon to reward political friends and punish political foes. In a, it is long past the due date for Mueller to clean up his team or Weissmann to resign as a sign that the United States is a nation of laws that are far more important than one Weissmann. I would say the same thing applies to MSNBC. We all lose from O'Donnell's involvement because the truth plays no role in O'Donnell's quest. And the respect for journalism and simple decency and following the facts do not appear in O'Donnell's playbook. But third and most importantly, again taking it from the article, all Americans lose whenever our media system is used as a weapon to destroy political foes. It is long past and due date for Bill Gates to clean up his team at MSNBC or O'Donnell to resign as a sign that the United States is a nation of reason that, are far, that is far more important than the ratings of Phil Griffin. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Jennifer Lawrence, who has attacked Christians by saying in a Vogue article, people holding their crucifixes, which may as well be pitchforks, and you still go to her movies. Actress Jennifer Lawrence, star of The Hunger Games, the highest paid actress in the world, has harshly criticized Christians. This is from Mark Judge in CNS News. In an interview for the December edition of Vogue, the subject of Kim Davis came up. You may remember Davis is the Kentucky county clerk who went to jail for refusing to sign wedding licenses for gay couples. Lawrence's reaction is described by Vogue writer Jonathan Van Meter as the following. Well, I, I read it to you already. Where she said with the pitchforks, all those people holding their crucifixes, which may as well be pitchforks. So my friends, you have the power with the NFL to turn off the games, which you have done. Their ratings are in the toilet. You have the power to put your hats on forward and not go to the games, not watch them on television. You have the ultimate power. You are the consumers. You also have the power to say, you know, she's a good-looking girl and she's pretty and sexy and all that, but I hate her politics. She hates Christians. I'm through. I'm through. I will not watch anything Harvey Weinstein has ever made on rerun, and any time I see Jennifer Lawrence is in a movie, I click past it now. We're going to render her obscure. You have the power. You understand how this works? It works for me and everyone else in the media. We live and die by our reputation. Come back, America. Where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? We're scraping for a piece of truth today. And I told the story of seagulls and pelicans fighting over bread where they don't kill each other. They don't even kill each other over a scrap of bread, and yet look what happens in this country when a guy like Lawrence O'Donnell will kill the truth in order to try and push the needle on his failing uh, television show by calling Kelly a racist because he's Irish Catholic from Boston. It's hard to believe 
that Bill Gates doesn't step in and stop this madness. All right, I can ask you some questions, and I'll tell you no lies. Let's take some callers. Liam on KSFO Line 2, what's on your mind, Liam? Michael, I'd first of all like to say thank you for your voice of reason and a cacophony of dimitude. Um, I'm the <laughs> son of a Boston Irish. My father was a World War II veteran uh, that served. And uh, this, I never heard of this character, Lawrence O'Donnell, until um, becoming aware of him through listening to you. And he is, in all suspicion, uh, what my father used to call an empty suit. And to insinuate that General Kelly... But, okay, he comes from a rich family in Boston. His father was a lawyer. General Kelly comes from a poor family. And he has the nerve to call General Kelly a racist, saying he never knew any black people. Have you ever heard anything as crazy in your life? Well, I, from listening to the clip where, he, where the uh, Lawrence O'Donnell character loses his marbles in, the, in his... Uh, in his um... Yeah, his off-camera, when he thought the, when the mic was turned off... You know, I'm going to tell you something. That didn't happen by accident. If you mistreat your staff, they'll get even with you. Well, so it was his staff leaked this to the media in order to show the world what he really is. And I, I would, I identify. The top of the morning to you. Where are you calling from, Liam? What city are you actually in? I am actually in uh, F Fremont, New Hampshire. You live in the Hampshire state. Yep. Beautiful state, the Granite State. Correct. Yes, the Grand State is lovely, and the uh, the foliage. And of course, you fled Boston. That's why you're in New Hampshire, and it doesn't hurt that there's no it doesn't hurt that there's no state taxes. Uh, not at all. No, nope, that's not bad. No, it doesn't hurt at all. New Hampshire's wonderful, beautiful state. Big deal. I'm not going there. But if Brown raises taxes, I'm going to leave the state. I'll tell you right now. I've had enough of this. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Does it great in, uh, in that show I don't watch anymore sometimes, never, occasionally. Because of the funeral, I couldn't take the dying thing, but had it, had it. They speak so beautifully in Boston. All right, let's take some calls. I invite you now on Open Mic to Mic Friday, 855-407-282. Robert, why don't we replay the echo chamber opening for those who just joined us. I tried something new because I was listening to Elvis Presley with Heartbreak Hotel, and I love the echo chamber. I have since I've been a boy listening to early rock and roll where Echo Chamber was often used. Let's hear it right now on The Savage Nation. This is The Savage Nation. Welcome to Rock and Roll Friday. The one and only Michael Savage with you on this. Thank God it's Friday day. And now let's go to the callers on Rock and Roll Friday on The Savage Nation. Nation, nation. Not bad. It sounds funny to me. Not really. doesn't really work, but it's a different. I need different. Can't do the same thing every day. I can't get up every day and do the same exact thing. Democrat bad, Republican worse. I'm terrific by my wig. I mean, I can't do it. That's all. Susan on WABC Line 4, go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Savage. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. But I wanted to tell you that your book, such a perfect timing, God, Faith, and Reason, because I think about when Moses went up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God, and he left everybody down in the village, so they created their own golden calf and worshipped it, and they worshipped themselves. It's the same thing today. Hollywood is still worshipping the golden calf, except now it's called the Golden Global Awards. And the same thing in, in, uh, in the government in D.C. It all applies to everybody. Well, it applies to the media for sure. I mean, in many ways, when I talk about MSNBC, I'm talking about people who are wor worshipping the golden calf. They're not interested in anything else. All right, I appreciate that. Stay on the line, Susan. We'll put you on the list for God, Faith, and Reason. It's supposed to come today. I'm supposed to get my first copy today. I haven't seen it yet. And I'm not going to read from the book till you have it, which is November 14th, when I'm going to ask you to go into the bookstores and clean out the shelves, buying uh, the book for people in your family who may be brought back to sanity by looking at one man's, let us say, travails in his attempt to find God. Let's put it to you that way. That's all. You know, if I look back, I'm, oh, here we go again. I don't want to do it. I have to do it, though. I started. I have to finish the thought. 
This is a free association, this show. I don't have a script. I can hear everything you say. I literally react to what you say by listening to you. No one writes uh, the reactions that I'm supposed to. No one writes my answers to the calls because I actually can hear you. And when I hear you, I listen to you. No one writes my answers for me. And so, therefore, I have to answer what I just thought of because it's a free associational show, which is the fact that I've been searching for God's presence my whole life. And I'm not really a religious guy. I'm not an organized religion guy, but I've been driven almost crazy looking for God. And I've looked for God in the most obscure places. I've looked for God inside, um, a, a, inside leaves and roots in the South Pacific. When I say that, what do I mean? What am I nuts just picking up a leaf? No, I was searching for healing plants for many years, not even not even knowing what drove me there, what was impelling me to go there. I could have made a better living buying um, um, broken real estate in Harlem at the time and made a fortune, and I knew it too. I had Russian friends who I had met who were buying up slum housing in New York City, and they said, Mike, come on in with us. We're going to buy a bunch of buildings up in uh, up upper New York, you know, north of Manhattan. We'll make a fortune because the buildings are going to go up in value. And I said, I know you're right. But that's not my road. I, I, I knew it when I was in Israel in 1978, and I had a chance to buy real estate in Jerusalem. I knew it would go through the roof. I was in Sfat, a beautiful city up on the Golan, and it was uh, an ancient city, and I knew how beautiful it w was and what it was going to become with the old uh, ancient stone houses that the artists were living in and the religious Jews were living in. And I remember going into a... <laughs> A religious study house through a hole in the wall. They didn't even have a door. I could have bought that building for fourteen thousand dollars. I knew it would be worth a fortune. I didn't buy it because that's not what I was put on this earth for. I was not put on the earth to be an investor or a speculator. And if you are, God, that's your your choice. I'm not knocking it. You I mean basically invest in speculators, uh, make the whole machinery run on the planet. You have to understand that. I'm not a communist. So the fact is, that's not my place. My place was always looking for something else, and here I am. And God rewarded me. And that's it. I don't want to get too preachy and whatever. Here we are. So I open it up to the stories of the day. And I'll go to my own website, my little website that could, michaelsavage.com. Top story, top right. Jennifer Lawrence attacks Christians, quote, people holding their crucifixes, which may as well be pitchforks. Goodbye, Jennifer. It was nice knowing you. Next story. Judging by Mueller's staffing choices, he may not be very interested in justice. On the left is God, faith, and reason available in bookstores. The search to find God is defining itself. And then there's some pages from the book with biblical quotes. Then there's a tweet, come back America, when did the left become fascistic, and who is funding? You know what's interesting? The left doesn't even know what the word fascist means. I try to explain it over the years. I did it many, many years. I had arguments with leftists on this show when they called any conservative a fascist. I said, no, you're actually the fascist. I said, do you know the derivation of the word fascist? And they went on, no, you're a, you're a, I said, listen, just for a minute, listen carefully. The word fascist, if you look up the etymology of the word, derives from fascia or sticks that were held in the hands of Roman soldiers. And they use the sticks or the fascia to control the population. In other words, like night sticks, you get it? So they were the fascists who used the sticks. So who is using the sticks today? Why, it's the good liberals at Harvard, the good liberals at Berkeley. The good liberals everywhere you turn are the true fascists of the day. Forget the labeling and look at who's doing what, and you'll come to understand we are in the civil war I tried to warn you about. And the left is on the attack, and we on the right are just taking it. We're actually sitting here like patsies taking the beating. And there must be a movement to arrest them, even if it's a citizen arre citizen's arrest, if they come in and break up a Republicans meeting, which they're doing, like at UC Santa Cruz, University of California, Santa Cruz, the other night there was a meeting. Just kids, Republicans. Republicans, that's all they were, Republican kids. Well, a group of self-righteous phonies who thought that they had the upper hand and the, the upper spiritual hand or whatever they think, come in the room and they break up the meeting in the library saying you're a bunch of Nazis, not fascists now. Now they've gone from right-winger to fascist, to Nazi. Anyone they disagree with is now a Nazi. And they try to stop the meeting, and they're screaming at the kids to get out of the library because they're making them uncomfortable. They've invaded their safe space. So one of the boys stands up and says, wait a minute now. I'm at the meeting to see what the Republicans are talking about, but I'm actually a Democrat who voted for Hillary Clinton. They said, shut up. Just by mere fact that you're here means that you're also a Nazi. 
and he tried to reason with them until eventually every kid in the library who was trying to study stood up and and said to the so-called self-righteous liberal progressive fascists shut up get out of here they saw for their own with their own eyes what the american left has sadly become in this nation no they're not the descendants of patrick moynihan they are the descendants of goebbels and hitler only they don't even understand because of their drug use and their insanity that they're the actual enemy of themselves that's one man's opinion now luckily police came and threw them out and arrested three of them and we need to see more of this in America. Campus police must must arrest the disruptors that Nancy Pelosi so loves. Remember, Nancy Pelosi was one of the chief architects of this disruption that we're seeing in America today. Do you remember how many years ago from 2013, 2014, 2015 on this show, I would play the speeches of Nancy Pelosi at graduations and that of Michelle Obama, who glorified these, these uh, uh, vandals do we have the Nancy Pelosi disruptive speech, Robert? It would be a good time to find it. I know you're under a lot of pressure. I'm not under pressure. This is real easy for me. It's just a duck on water every day, three hours a day. But so, seriously, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Nancy Pelosi would give speeches. She's one of the richest women in the world. And go to UC Berkeley and give a, a, a speech at the, for graduates and say, you're a bunch of disruptors. Go out there and disrupt. You're a bunch of disruptors. So if you think these children who have now grown up and become actual fascists are doing this spontaneously, you are mistaken. They were steamed up. They were given justification for their violence by the Nancy Pelosi's and the others of that time. But I don't want to relive past history. We're living right now. WABC, Ed, let's take callers. They're more important to me than tapes. What's on your mind, Ed, from New York City? Hi, Michael. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the Jennifer Lawrence comment where she uh, portrays Christians as with crucifixes uh, might as well have been pitchforks. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's like a lifelong delusion with these people. They, they're raised in a particular manner, and they have no way of even looking beyond their own psyche to see any kind of other... Ed, you've got to understand something else. I'm sure you're right. She's only an actress. She's stupid. And so, so if she portrays an intelligent woman, she's only doing so because someone like, uh, shall we say, Harvey Weinstein produced the movie and provided her with a good script. But she's actually a stupid person who doesn't even know what the heck she is saying, Ed. Actors and actresses are generally dumb. Look at Robert De Niro. Do you think those remarks, I'd like to punch him, he's a mook, he's a this, he's a that, do you think that that's the mark of an intelligent man, what Robert De Niro said, is saying no, about no, Trump? Like they're so full of themselves. They're, they're so, their egos are so inflated, and they are not smart. They're, they're very... And nobody ever calls them on it and says, now, wait a minute, you went over the line here. You can't just call people who wear crucifixes those names and say they may as well be pitchforks, Jennifer, that if anyone ever said that to her, they'd be fired, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. Now, could you imagine anyone standing, could you imagine anybody ever standing up to Robert De Niro, who played gangsters for so many years? He is probably a very intimidating, terrifying man. He is physically very tough. He grew up in Little Italy. I'm sure he's a tough guy. But why would a man who was genuinely tough act like such a fool and start screaming, I'd like to punch the president in the nose? Does that does that show you intelligence? No, it doesn't. They're they're living in a bubble where it's almost like politicians. They're they're yes men and women, and are adoring them, and the public reveres them. A lot of the public reveres them. They they look at them for their movie roles as if that's the reality. Right, right. Ed, are you in the are you in the theatrical business at all? No, I'm not. I uh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you wear do you wear a crucifix? Is that why you took Jennifer Lawrence's de de debasing remarks personally? I'm I'm actually not that religious, Michael. I grew up uh, as a Catholic. I do believe in God, but I just the the remark was so ludicrous that I yeah right exactly <laughs> that would be like saying people who hold their Jewish stars they may, may as well be holding a fill in the blank. That's you know make up anything you want. Well, you're perfect for my book, God, Faith, and Reason. You're the secular, lapsed Catholic 
that I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to reach secular people who come from somewhat religious families or in the past they knew what religion was and they know that there's a God but they're not in organized religion. You're going to be the perfect reader and that's why I'm putting you on the list for a free copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Hold on now. The phone number is 855 400 This is the Savage Nation. The phone number here is 855-400-SAVAGE. It's still open mic to mic Friday. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. something wouldn't it be great to have all the energy that you want all day long well unfortunately fatigue often gets in the way even for every the activities and it seems to get worse every year and there's a reason you see when you're 20 your body has a natural ability to maintain healthy circulation but by age 40 that ability decreases by half and that leaves you feeling blech, tired so what can you do to increase that youthful natural circulation and fight fatigue drink super beats super beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. Only Super Beats is made from beets grown to exacting standards, then con concentrated into superfood crystals. So listen to me. If you want to increase your own natural energy, all you got to do is call 800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. And with your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats absolutely free plus indicator strips to see how Super Beats is working for you, and also free shipping. Easy, 800-481-0504, 800-481-0504, or go to savagelovesbeats.com. Speaking of getting older and hanging in there, I see that uh, there's a U.S. Granny Beauty Queen contest now. I can't believe this. And uh, the women over 70, into their 90s, Miss Senior America, get up there and... Uh, they have to uh, tap dance, sing, or show off their curves. That's, please, in a sequin gown with a crown glittering on coiffed hair. Oh, that's, I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't know. Do you celebrate this? Like, it's kind of embarrassing in a way, isn't it? A U.S. granny beauty queen? Maybe I should put together a Mr. Senior America contest. And I'll be the, uh, what, the MC, Robert? I should be the MC. And Mr. Senior America would be based upon voice, Cognitive skills, sense of humor, not whether you can tap dance, showing off their curves. I don't think so in a male. I don't, you could show off your curves, but I don't think that's really what makes a man very attractive over a certain age. I would say cognitive skills, sense of humor, voice, and of course, of course, you have to present yourself in a certain way. I don't know, just thinking out loud here. Let's take some calls. I have a minute left in this hour. WFNC Radio in North Carolina, line four, fire away. Hey there, Michael. I really appreciate you having me on, man. It's a true honor. Um, I just called the tail end of your last uh, caller talking about your new book that you have out. Um, basically, when I was when I was born, I was born into a Methodist church, and then we moved, and I came into a Baptist church when I was about eight till about sixteen. Um, then my parents had a divorce, and we became the laughing stock of the church, and mm. you know, it kind of pushed me out of the religion circle. And now that I'm out of college and working with my own and all, I'm, you know, getting back into the Word. And uh, my grandfather just died, and I inherited his Bible. And it's really uh, I, So you're hoping that reading my book, God, Faith, and Reason, might bring you back to your own religion and to God? Yes, sir. I, I mean, I, I would... You are absolutely the perfect reader of my book. That is who it's aimed for. I do not believe that the super-religious are going to touch it. Stay on the line. You get a free copy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you. 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Oh, to the Savage Nation. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truths you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up again with worn-out tools if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn again, and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe the word about your loss, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with kings, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. That was written not by a rap star, that was written not by a progressive. That was written not by one of the illiterate, psychopathic progressives. That was written by Rudyard Kipling, one of the greatest poets of all time, whose life was destroyed by the progressives of his time, who called him every name under the sun when his politics no longer fit uh, the bill. A poster was made up for me along these lines back in 2002, I think when I first began in talk radio. I, I always used to keep a pocket copy of if in um, well readily at hand and I've recommended to you over the years you have a child read them if read it over read it read to them repeatedly all through their growth and explain to them what if means and they'll learn to be independent and strong that's only if you can explain it to them properly <laughs> that's the kicker word on that one if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. How's that one? Boy, does that apply to me in my radio career and my writing career. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. I can wait for 40 years for something. And one thing is for sure, I never forget my enemies. I have to talk about the trash and the dirt of society. Instead, I have to wrap my brain around the lowest form of humanity those people that I've seen on the left in the media, I don't understand how they can get up in the morning and shave. You take a guy like Lawrence O'Donnell. He comes from an Irish Catholic background in Boston, went to an, a very expensive private school, and yet he attacks General Kelly, saying Kelly grew up in an Irish neighborhood in Boston that was segregated where there were no blacks. Do you realize how low this guy is? Now, Lawrence O'Donnell came from a family that his father was an attorney. He is also of Irish descent. But he looked down, he looks down upon Kelly, who was poor, while O'Donnell was rich. Do you understand where this is coming from? Kelly, he calls a low-class Irishman, Kelly, General Kelly. A man, I got to tell you, O'Donnell is not fit to shine his shoes. O'Donnell, this guy, this character on MSNBC, who jumped into the fray over what Kelly said, a man who's given his own son to this nation, son's life to this nation. Well, all O'Donnell has done is given us hatred. He is also of Irish descent, also grew up in Boston. You see, I did my research, went to Harvard. That's where his mind was per polluted. And what you don't know about O'Donnell, who was a declared socialist, which is why he hates America, was a legislative aide to Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. That would be like working for Tip O'Neill on the days that he's sober, which were none. And what is the tuition at St. Sebastian's private school that O'Donnell went to, an independent all-boys Catholic secondary school in Needham, Massachusetts? Now, who is O'Donnell? You don't even know who I'm talking about? He's a low-ranking, unheard-of, 
hater of America on MSNBC, who has the nerve to attack General Kelly, who he calls a racist, because Kelly is from an Irish Catholic neighborhood in Boston. What's ironic here is that O'Donnell, the lowlife, was also an Irish Catholic from Boston. But you see, it's not about Irish Catholicism. It's about the fact that this snotty individual, O'Donnell, came from a rich family, went to a private Catholic school that cost $44,000 a year today in the 2017 academic year. This guy O'Donnell, here's a guy, I'm going back to him because you don't even know who I'm talking about. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to harp on it a little bit. Here we have the gold star controversy based on nothing. Here we have an unknown congresswoman with a goofy hat who looks like a, just a, a goofball, a nobody. In my day, we used to call someone like that a non-entity. That's a phrase that should be brought back. She's a non-entity, basically, a nothing. So now she criticizes a great general, a real Marine general, not a faker, calls him names, says he's a racist. See, anyone who disagrees with a black leftist is automatically a racist, according to the knee-jerk fascists on the left. Now, joining the fray is a guy with very low ratings, possibly the lowest ratings in the media, this guy O'Donnell, who is a declared socialist. What's interesting is that he attacks General Kelly as a racist. Now, you've got to listen very carefully to O3. Just play it. John Kelly had absolutely no empathy for Frederica Wilson today. But they have and you more did? in common than John Kelly realizes. They were both born in segregated cities. They both went to segregated schools. Frederica Wilson was born in Miami in 1942. Right. You get the picture, right? Okay, so he's saying he doesn't like John Kelly, and he tells you why in the next, in clip four. Let's start that one, Robert, please. John Kelly never sat beside a student like Frederica Wilson in his elementary school. Did you? The language about black people in John Kelly's white neighborhood was exactly the same language about now black people. Now, we got to stop right here. If if I were General Kelly, I would challenge O'Donnell to a fist fight for what he is saying to him. This low life, this low creature O'Donnell is Irish from the same exact city of Boston at about the same time. And what the snot nose O'Donnell is actually saying is that John Kelly was shanty Irish because he didn't have the money that O'Donnell had. See, O'Donnell comes from a family whose father was an attorney. He's also Boston Irish. But you see, O'Donnell, coming from a richer home, went to a private Catholic school called St. Sebastian's that uh, has a tuition today of $44,000 a year. I wonder if um, Lawrence O'Donnell sat, to, sat next to any Frederica Wilsons in that Catholic school. Anyone have an answer to that one? I kind of think he's looking in the mirror and calling himself names. But do you realize how low this situation is that he would call a, a distinguished general who gave his son, whose son gave his life to this nation, a name like that, and try to equate him with a racist simply because he's criticizing some goofy woman who happens to be a demagogue, who happens to be African-American? Do you understand how low MSNBC has become? Now, I don't blame O'Donnell. He should be thrown off the air, but there is no management at MSNBC. I know who runs it. Believe me, I know the type. I met the type. It's the type at MSNBC called Phil Griffin who is the problem. He permits this to go on. Do you realize if I did a thing like that, I would be thrown off the air? Do you have any idea that if I implied that someone disagrees with someone because they're a racist, I wouldn't last in the radio business? This is the Savage Nation, the home of God, faith, and reason. My big book, which will be out in a few weeks now. God, it's so close. I'm actually getting nervous. The search to find God is the finding itself. I don't know if religious people are going to like that. The search to find God is the finding itself. I think the average person who is spiritually oriented will find the book phenomenally interesting, but people who are into organized religion may reject it. Because I'm saying the search to find God is the finding of God itself, finding of God himself, meaning you don't need an intermediary to find God. That's the way I see it, and I'm only one man among seven billion. So who knows if people are going to resonate with my view. I have no idea whether God, faith, and reason will catch a wave. I don't know whether it will trend like North Korea, Hurricane Irma, iPhone X, Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Jose, Irma, iPhone 8, 
I don't know if God, faith, and reason will trend like that. All I know is that I got to do what I do. I'm going to read you page 16 from my forthcoming book, God, Faith, and Reason. It won't be painful. It's only a paragraph long. I want you to see what a secular man has to say on this issue. And I wrote this, and it's on page 16. I said that I once met a rabbi who concluded that God is, in fact, not omnipotent, but only omnipresent, meaning we do have, we do have free will and control our own destinies. And I write, yes, there are things encoded in us, encoded in us, perhaps through genetics, perhaps through faith that we cannot control. Perhaps we are born for certain faiths, but within the parameters of these genetic or predetermined destinies, we have wide latitude, and that is why we need the guidebook called the Holy Bible. Notice what I said, and that is why we need the guidebook called the Holy Bible. And then on page 16 of my book, I put a biblical quote. This is the beauty of this book. There are actual Old Testament quotes throughout. Set up an old typeface, and it, I, I quoted Isaiah 41.10 where, where he wrote, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I strengthen thee, yea, I help thee, yea, I uphold thee with my victorious right hand. You say, well, that's interesting. So that's a secular book, and I say pre-order God, Faith, and Reason. There's a link to, to Amazon. And yes, I am selling you a book, yes. Yes, I do want it to take off, yes. No, I want it to fail. No, I want the book to flop. I've had four or five New York Times bestsellers in a row. This is the biggest chance I've ever taken. Ultra-Orthodox Mount, Day of Rage Against Army Draft. A bunch of no-goodniks. A bunch of spoiled no-goodniks. Without the military, there'd be no ultra-Orthodox in Israel. There'd be nothing. They'd be walking around on their hands and knees, begging for their lives. What are they doing here? What are they doing? What kind of people are these that they're so insane and disconnected from reality? What do you mean a day of rage against the army draft? How about your, your secular Jewish compatriots who, whose sons go in the military and their daughters? What are you talking about? And then we're talking about afterlife. I, I have to work that in right now. I'm sorry. There was an article that I saw about the afterlife. I was going to do, do gluten hysteria explained. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people who are gluten sensitive who die and get really sick and can die. If they have celiac disease. But actually, I'm going into it now because one of the chief scientists who provided key evidence of gluten sensitivity amongst non-celiac disease individuals this scientist recently published follow-up papers that show the opposite. And the paper came out last year, not in the New York Post, but in the journal Gastroenterology. And he studied up his, his original study, and he found that only 1% of Americans, about 3 million people, actually suffer from celiac disease, but 18% of stupid American adults now buy gluten-free foods. And what's worse yet is you see the mothers feeding their children gluten-free, everyone's gluten-free, Idiots, they're paying more, and they're denying the child primarily important nutri nutrients. They don't even know what gluten is, but they know it's, it's, the new, it's the new bugaboo. Gluten, 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 gluten. They don't even ask what gluten is. It's like the idiots that tell you they're vegans. They don't even know why. Gluten. What is gluten? It's a protein found in any normal diet. I've said this to Middle Easterners or Mexicans. They laugh at me. They work, how stupid can Americans be? You go to a Central American country, you go to Mexico or Central America, what is the primary foodstuff of that, of that region? What do they make every morning? What do they make? They take wheat, and they roll it, and they dough it, and then they heat it on a hot stone, they eat it, a piece of hot bread, in other words. You go to the Middle East, what are the Arabs eating? What do they eat every day, going back thousands of years, if they could get it? They, wheat, by the way, wonderful, they love it. And what do they make? They make a bread. Every day they need a piece of bread. What kind of stupidity is this that people think bread is now their enemy? Their worst enemy on earth is now a piece of bread. I've heard all the other stuff like, well, the wheat then isn't the same as wheat now. That's the clever answer. No, it is the same wheat. Yeah, I know. Monsanto poisoned the wheat. Therefore, you can't eat wheat without dying. So the scientist who came up with this hysteria went back and tested 37 identified, self-identified gluten-sensitive patients. And what happened was... The subjects were cycled through high gluten, low gluten, and no gluten, meaning placebo diets. And they didn't know which diet plan they were on at any given time. And guess what happened? In the end, all of the treatment diets, even the placebo diet, the placebo diet, which had no gluten, 
All of them caused pain, bloating, nausea, and gas to a similar degree. And it didn't matter if the diet contained gluten. So what's that about? Uh, it wasn't the gluten causing the reaction. It was called mind over matter, psychosomatic illness, in other words. I've studied this in great detail when I was a, well, let's say when I was in biosciences. The psycho, you know, the, the mind-body connection is awesome. The mind can kill, the mind can heal. You know that in your own life. That's all. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I was really going to start talking about seagulls and pelicans, and then I changed it to come back America. Where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? I think I know the answer to that. And uh, I was going to relate it to the fact that when I wake up in the morning at dawn, I usually take old stale bread and feed it to the seagulls. I go out in the old bathrobe before the coffee, and I throw bread to the gulls. They always wait for me. They're like pet birds by now. But I've noticed something unique, which is that now the pelicans are coming in after the uh, fires. It seems that something's gone wrong in the ecosystem because the pelicans are now as hungry as the gulls. And I never knew pelicans to be scavengers, while seagulls are scavengers. We know that. And these glorious birds, the pelicans, were now competing with the seagulls for the bread that I threw them. But the story was not about the competition between various species of birds. It was about the fact that neither of them killed each other. The pelicans, which are ten times larger than the seagulls, could easily kill the seagulls in the when they go for the bread, but they don't. What happens is that the pelicans come in, these large B1s of the bird world, and they land, and the other guys just kind of bob away, but they don't kill them. And I was trying to say that these species of birds have more dignity than we do. Yes, they're competing for scraps of bread, but they don't kill each other over it. Man is much lower than birds. Man is much lower than birds. There was a time in my life when liberals and conservatives disagreed. They even maybe raised their voices, but they, they were never like the drug addicts on campuses today. Savage. The key words of the stories in the media you're not going to believe what they were. News. In other words, when I say keywords, what are the top news stories in the news, okay, recently? Irma, iPhone 8, North Korea, Hurricane Irma, Trump, iPhone X, Hurricane Maria, Mexico earthquake, Hurricane Jose, and, and NFL. So now, if I start to talk to you, what I want to talk about, like Come Back America, where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? Most of you are not even going to listen to what I'm talking about. You're going to, you're going to get nervous. You're going to want to hear about a hurricane or tornado or a fire. Your mind's going to skip to the morons in the NFL. You're not going to pay attention to me. Th this is the problem. I mean, I was all set to talk about Come Back America, where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic? By referring to the fall of Rome giving you a little history on the fall of Rome and how it relates to the invasion of America by the barbarians today and comparing them to the barbarians uh, that invaded Rome and destroyed the civilization of Rome. And I was going to quote what I quoted in my last book, that Roman civilization did not pass peacefully away. It was assassinated. That was the, I think, the, I think that was the opening quote to one of my last books. I was going to do all of that. I was going to tell you about <coughs> the story of the Germanic race, which invaded Rome. See, at that time, the Germanic race was barbaric, and they were the barbarians. But the key word I was going to tell you, the key words, the key line, was that Rome and the barbarians at that time were not only protagonists, but they had two different attitudes to life, civilization and barbarism. I was going to tell you all of that. I was going to talk about all of these things. But alas, I'm in a medium that doesn't permit it. There was a time in my life when liberals and conservatives disagreed, but they, they were never like the 
drug addicts on campuses today who are so self-righteous in their hatred that they dare come on a college campus at University of California, Santa Cruz, right in my backyard, so to speak, where a group of college Republicans were meeting, not Nazis, college Republicans, and these self-righteous SOBs calling themselves progressives broke into the meeting in the library and started to scream, Nazis off campus, Nazis off campus. One of the boys stood up and said, I'm a Democrat. I voted for Hillary Clinton. They said, we don't care. You're here. You're a Nazi. He tried to reason with these fascistic progressives. There was no reasoning. And I realized that we're now living not in a very dangerous age. We've been in a very dangerous age ever since Obama was foisted upon us by forces we will never, ever understand. And where it ends, nobody knows. I have some idea where this ends. That's why I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War a number of years ago. But I said, how did it become acceptable for self-righteous progressives to stand up and call anyone they disagree with Nazis? They've gone now from, you're a conservative, you're, first it was conservative, then right-winger. Then it was fascist, now it's Nazi, anyone they disagree with. And they were screaming this, they were saying, you don't know, you threaten all marginal people on this campus, they screamed. What is a marginal person? What do you mean a marginal person? What does that mean? It means a person who didn't belong there to begin with. Someone who didn't have the grades to make it in an academic setting. Someone who was selected sim simply because of their marginal uh, selectivity. Is that why they're there? I never heard of anything like this. What do you mean by a marginal person? Well, what does that mean, a marginal person? A, a Republican threatens a marginal person? How do they define themselves as a marginal person? What is a marginal person? I would love for real Nazis to meet the fake progressive boys on these campuses one day. I'd love to see what happens when these progressive loudmouths really run into a real Nazi. I'd love to see what really happens. It's so easy to beat up and attack Republican kids. It's so easy to attack Jewish boys who defend Israel and call them Nazi and fascist. I wonder what would happen if these so-called progressive, self-righteous, fraudulent, dangerous so-called revolutionaries from spoiled brat backgrounds like O'Donnell really ran into an actual Nazi. We're going to play the real Lawrence O'Donnell. We're talking about a lowlife on MSNBC who was Irish from Boston, who came from a rich family. Father was a lawyer. Nothing wrong with that. But what's wrong with this is that he now attacks General Kelly for having dared to say the truth about that call to the Gold Star mom. And he doesn't just talk about it in a generic term. He then calls General Kelly a racist, saying that General Kelly is a racist because he grew up in Boston and he didn't sit next to black people. It is such BS because this guy, O'Donnell, came from a rich family, went to St. Sebastian's private school, which costs today $44,000 $44, a year. Let me ask you something. Do you agree with me that this is a class war by Lawrence O'Donnell? who thinks that General Kelly is shanty Irish behind the curtains. Why don't you listen now to the insanity that follows. This is O'Donnell when caught off mic with an open mic. What's going on? Why am I losing this? Why don't I have sound? All right, it's back. Someone's pressing buttons and turning my sound off. Someone in that control room is out of control. You have insanity in my earpiece. Don't, don't leave it there. It's not my earpiece. It's somebody talking on our lines. Every time we go to Assad, there's a woman talking in my ear about something that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. Stop the hammering out there. Who's got a hammer? Where is it? Where's the hammer? Is it on the... Go up on the other floor. Somebody go up there and stop the hammering. I'm not stop making this up. Stop the hammering. I'll go down to the damn floor myself and stop it. Keep the, this is the damn nice commercial guy. break going. Call f***ing Phil you go, Griffin. Phil. I don't hey, care Phil, you schmuck, do something. Stop do that. something, you schmuck, Phil Griffin. Because when I get through, you're going to wish to God you got rid of the lunatic. We're not putting up with calling General Kelly a racist. Just remember what I said. Let me review it so you don't forget it. Boston Irish, both O'Donnell and Kelly. While General Kelly is a distinguished man who was a Marine general, is a Marine general, and of course uh, the number one guy in the White House next to the president, the gatekeeper in essence, had a son who also enlisted in the, in the Marines, who died in Afghanistan, and gave his life for this nation. Lawrence O'Donnell comes from a rich Irish background, 
and looks down upon General Kelly because Kelly was poor. Do you know how low this is to call him a racist simply because he's poorer than he was? Both Irish, both Boston. One came from a humble working class family. That would be the general. One came from uh, uh, an attorney. Oh, by the way, one other kicker that you may not know about. O'Donnell wrote a book in 1983 about a case of wrongful death and police brutality in which O'Donnell's father was the plaintiff's lawyer. It doesn't get any lower than that, does it? Where is America? It can't be Donald Trump that caused all of this, can it? What has Trump actually done that's so bad? Can anyone explain to me why they hate him so much? Is it because he beat Hillary Clinton? Is that the only reason? Now, break it apart. The madness, the insanity, the foaming at the at the mouth, hatred for him is out of proportion with all of his defects, deficits, okay? What has he actually done that's so horrendous? I don't I can't put my finger on it. What is driving them so crazy? Now it is true that George I don't know if this is related or not. George Soros, who to me is one of the most evil people on the planet, uh, one man's opinion, transferred eighteen billion dollars of his own money to his own foundation in order to upset elections around the globe. And what's intriguing to me is that here's a man who actually has meddled in elections all over Europe and has never been called on the carpet for it, while Donald Trump, who never actually has been proven to have had the Russians meddle for him, is now being investigated by a man who has so overstepped his boundaries as a as a uh, special investigator that we've never seen anything like this in American history. And that is because Mueller is now out of control. He's, he's a raging, out-of-control prosecutor. I saw a great article on this yesterday, and uh, it talked about the worst of all of them, a man, a man named Andrew Weissman. Oh, yes, you didn't know that. The mad dog behind Mueller is a man who has destroyed one life after another, according to this article, and it was written by a liberal who said that Andrew Weissman, the prosecutor hired by Mueller, has destroyed one life after another, cost thousands of jobs at Enron with false accusations, and then when it was found that he made the whole thing up, it was too late, the jobs were gone. This one mad dog lawyer, Andrew Weissman, the article said, was hired by Mueller in order to bring down Trump's family, and they said that even if there is no crime, Weissman will invent one. Andrew Weissman will invent a crime in order to indict one of Trump's children. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. The first part of MSNBC is MS. That's Microsoft. They're in partnerships, so far as I know. Maybe it's no longer a partnership. But I do know this. I know that a major American corporation that specializes in philanthropy should put some controls on a mad dog amongst their uh, stable of rabid mad dogs when they go over the line and say, no, you can't call General Kelly a true American hero whose son gave his life for this nation. No, you can't call him a racist, and you're fired. That's the end of it. But, see, Bill Gates is not going to step in, because once he did, he would admit that he has no control over this mad dog operation. But it doesn't mean that I can't tell you that something must be done, because I opened the show by saying to you, I observed this morning as I fed the seagulls, as I often do, that uh, when the large pelicans came along to fight over the bread, they didn't kill each other. They got sort of like floated out of the way that even the birds know how to get along with each other. Even when they're fighting over a scrap of bread, they don't kill each other. While in America now, the left-wing fascists are literally killing the truth, and they're going to kill this nation unless they are reined in. And that has to start today. It has to start with Bill Gates, who wants the best for America, I am sure, to step in and make Phil Griffin get control of the mad dogs in his network. Now, why am I so angry? Because there's no greater thing that you can lose than your child. There's nothing worse that could happen to a man. But he didn't just get lost to a drug addiction. He didn't get lost in a car wreck. General Kelly lost his son as his son was fighting in Afghanistan while this lowlife O'Donnell called him a racist because he's Irish Catholic from Boston. Now, what's ironic here and stupid is that O'Donnell's Irish Catholic from Boston. But what you don't know is what I taught you today, is that O'Donnell comes from a rich family of Irish Catholics. His father was a lawyer. And what he's saying here is that Kelly, who was poor Irish Catholic, is no good and he's a racist. It doesn't get any lower than this. And so now let me bring it into what we're talking about 
which is this non-entity woman who no one ever heard of and will be, be will be forgotten to history. She'll go back to the obscurity that she was from, this Frederica Wilson, the crazy woman with the hat, in clip five. Let's hear this one now. You mean to tell me that I have become so important <laughs> that the White House is following me? And my word, this is amazing. It's amazing. That is absolutely phenomenal. I have to tell my kids that I'm a rock star now. <laughs> no, you're not a rock star now. You're a rockhead now. So now following up with that is the mad dog on MSNBC who calls General Kelly a racist in clip four. You got to hear this one. It's very important you hear it. John Kelly never sat beside a student like Frederica Wilson in his elementary school. The language about black people did you? in John Kelly's hey, white O'Donnell, did you? was exactly the same language about black people that was used at that time. Do you know in this is demagoguery? In the segregated South. Do you know this and is the warfare? Pain of desegregating Boston schools was visited entirely upon the students. Let's stop right here. Do you like realize what he's doing? He's throwing lighter fluid. He's trying to cause a race war for ratings, just to move the needle slightly. This low life O'Donnell. This low creature who knows much better. After all, his father was a lawyer. He went to Harvard. He wrote for the Harvard Lampoon. He was captain of the baseball team at in high school. He, f he was on a football team. He knows better. He knows what he's doing. He knows that right now he is the demagogues that he probably heard should be silenced when he worked for Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who was actually a true liberal. Moynihan was one of the true great liberals of American political history, incidentally. This man knows what he's doing. He's trying to start a race war. But worse than that, he is smearing the reputation or trying to do so of General Kelly. Now, if it came from another leftist, you could understand it. But this guy O'Donnell is an avowed socialist, which is utterly unbelievable given that he comes from a rich family. But then I'm not surprised by anything today. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is the savage nation. We're living in maddening times. We know that when you have an, an actress like Jennifer Lawrence saying that Christians uh, are referred to by her as people holding their crucifixes, which may as well be pitchforks, and she thinks that there will be no consequences to a thing like that, that is insanity. It's about as insane as Harvey Weinstein's behavior, by the way, in another dimension. Now, I also want to talk about the other stories that I haven't gotten to yet. Hungary, country of Hungary fears the Soros influence in the elections of their nation. After this activist called Soros, who meddles in foreign elections, injected $18 billion of his own money into his foundation. Did you hear what I just said? This man, Soros, has meddled in many elections around the world, Hungary amongst them. And yet we hear in this country that there's been meddling in elections without any proof whatsoever. When we know Soros meddled in elections in Israel, etc. Very, very dangerous times we are living in at that. I want to play for you a short piece, no, I don't have the time, of Bush and Obama denouncing Donald Trump. It's hard to believe that would have occurred on the same day, but we're past the point of playing it. Uh, here's a story on michaelsavage.com that I'd invite you to uh, check out over the weekend. The elegant and lovely and brilliant Melania Trump has cut the bloated First Lady payroll from Michelle Obama's days. No credit for that, A, Lawrence. A, two, Lawrence. Melania Trump is embracing a more active and public schedule as First Lady, but she still runs one of the leanest East Wing operations in recent history. Do you remember who worked for Michelle Obama? 16 people. Salary, $1.24 million a year. This year, just four people working for the elegant, brilliant Melania their salaries totaling $486,000. Thank you very much, First Lady, for bringing dignity and uh, cost savings to the White House. 
Come Back America. This is Michael Savage, home of God, Faith, and Reason. I'll be here on Monday with God's will and your listenership. Savage.